this is Rainbow Harmony here to help you find balance and peace to live a more colorful life. And this is a pick a card reading for love. So before we get started, just a couple of life updates in case some of you guys are wondering. I have recently traveled to a new location that's just a couple hours away from where I was. You know, I'm not getting on a plane or anything right now. It's actually kind of impossible for those of us who are Americans. but. I'm still in Croatia, I'm loving it. I recently took a couple days off to just recharge and enjoy the peach. And I got a lot of downloads during that time, especially about like what's going on in like love. <laughs> and I just, I feel a big difference. And not only just from like the energies I'm feeling, but from, I just feel like everybody that I see like around on the streets is like falling in love. And I don't think it's just like this Croatia thing. I think it's like happening all over the world right now. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that everyone is now starting to slowly come back out of their homes and into life. And maybe going through such a lonely time is making a lot of people realize that it's time for love, you know, that they don't want to go forward alone. And I've been noticing too from a lot of personal readings I've been doing and from coaching that I've been getting a lot more messages about people asking me about their love life and about like somebody they've recently met. And so I'm just excited to get into this reading for you guys. With that said, I am offering love readings and you can get an extra 10% off by looking down below. I have a discount code for you guys. I'm open right now. I'm kind of like off of vacation. I'm still hitting the beaches in the evenings after work, but I'm here. I've got a really great place to be working right now and I'm open for readings. So just hit me up if you're interested. Uh, this reading is intended more for those of you guys who are single and who are looking to mingle. Um, I'm going to be doing many different types of love readings over the next couple of like days and week. You're going to see a lot of love readings on my channel. So if you're someone who's in a relationship or who is already seeing somebody specific, or you have questions about a specific person, this reading might not resonate. This is more for people who are just like single and they're ready and there's really nothing much going on. So this is for those of you guys who fall in that category. So keep in mind as always that this is a general reading, a tarot reading on the internet. I've gotten lots of compliments about how accurate my readings are for you guys but always trust your own intuition and your own inner guidance when doing any type of reading online, okay? So I've got three options for you guys today. All you have to do is choose a flower that you feel called to the most. So the first one is like this purple flower. I don't know what it is, but it's like purple and it has little bits of white in it. And it's just like this light lilac type of color and it's really pretty and yeah, so we've got number one for you guys. And then we have number two, which is a white, white flowers that have a little bit more of like a fern-like kind of look to them. So there's number two. So number one, number two, and then we have number three, which looks a little bit like, uh, like more lavender type of color. So this is number three. So choose the flowers you feel you're drawn to the most. Number, let's see if I can hold them all up. Number one, number two, or number three. And then all you have to do to get your reading is just fast forward to your part in the reading by going below to the description or the comments where the timestamps are posted. So you can just click on that and automatically be fast forward to your part in the reading. And I will see you soon. So for those of you guys who choose number one, let's go ahead and get your message. I've got one card to explain a little bit about where you're at right now, a couple cards for what you're going to be experiencing soon in love, and then I've got a card where we're gonna pull from a book and actually read you a little message about what's going on in your love life. So the first card is the Three of Pentacles, 
which is really interesting. I think this is a message about how you've been focused a lot more lately, maybe on your finances, maybe on your career, um, more on your personal goals and your growth and your development, which is really good. I always tell people if you want to attract romantic love, then focus on your personal growth. And you hear that all the time. All the tarot readings are like, just focus on yourself. That's the best way to attract love. The more work that you put into yourself, the more love that you show yourself, the more you can get that mirrored back to you. You know, as within, so without, as above, so below. But there's a message here for you about having fun. Because if we're talking about manifestation here, if we're talking about manifesting love, you have to remember that like attracts like. So what is love? Love is an energy of fun. It's uplifting, it's exciting, it's optimistic, it's youthful, it's inspiring. So you need to remember to have fun. You need to remember to get out there and to explore life, to have blissful experiences. And it is so true, you guys. For me, just after spending a couple days on vacation, a couple days at the beach, I have come back so refreshed. So many things I've been trying to manifest just like randomly came through at this time. And the world is better. <laughs> My universe is better. Things are flowing in harmony. So sometimes we feel like we have to work and work and work to receive something. And I think our society teaches us that, that our worth is measured by our productivity and we have to earn it. But remember that you're already worthy of love. Remember that you're already deserving. Remember you might have a soul contract with someone and it could just be a matter of divine timing. So keep on going with your goals. That's obviously extremely important, but it's almost, this card's almost like you've been working a little bit too hard and you need to just chill. It's pretty much that simple. Sometimes when we give up the fight, when we give up like the work, when we give up the need to prove ourselves through what we do and through our productivity, that's those are the times when the miracles come. And so this is a big message for you. This Three of Pentacles here is telling you, you can slay your dreams, you can slay your goals, but you can also allow time for fun. And when you relax and when you're spontaneous and you take up those invitations or you go somewhere new, you have a chance to meet new people, to connect with new people. So it's kind of like a little nod in a certain direction for you to maybe explore new avenues for connecting with other people. You do have to do your part. You're gonna have to do your part, you know? I, that's what I feel for those of you guys who've chosen number one. Some of you guys in personal readings, I see like, you know what? This person's dropping into your path. You don't need to do anything. I think for you, you might need to change something up because if you always do what you've always done you always get what you've always got and if you just keep having the same routine you get out of bed at the same time you go to work you go out with the same friend after the same restaurant or whatever you come home netflix and chill then you're gonna end up with maybe the same pool of people to be hitting up and so it's saying like, you gotta change up your routine a little bit, try something new. With that said, let's see what is coming in for you in love, like what's going on. Interestingly enough, the first card that we're getting is the reparenting yourself card, okay? So this card is actually almost like a pat on the back, like a congratulations, because I see that during this time of being single, you have been learning how to bring love to yourself and how to nurture yourself, how to care for yourself. I feel like it's almost like in a way you just decided, you know what, I'm just going to give up on love like it's hopeless. I'm over it. But in a weird way, that mindset has for a while helped you to just learn to love life without needing to have a romantic partner. I remember what that was like when I was younger. All of my girlfriends always had a significant other and I always seemed to be the one that was single. I was always the one that like was the girl on the side or the one that the guy didn't want to lock it down with or the girl <laughs> didn't want to lock it down with for whatever reason. And so I definitely had my share of love and flings, but I just 
I did spend a lot of time single and I got so disheartened that I was like, you know what, F love, I'm never getting married, I'm never gonna do it, like I just, I can't even, like, I'm so painful sometimes being single and watching everybody else have their person and be in that love and that bliss. And I had to learn how to have fun on my own. On weekends when all my friends were busy and I was just alone and I wasn't working, I had to learn how to create a fun day for myself, a happy day for myself. And there were times I just moped around. I'm pointing at some of you guys out there because I know some of you guys are really moping sometimes. Just like, when is this person gonna come swiping on Tinder, going on dates, realizing, oh, that is another F boy, oh, that's another F girl. It's another person that just wants to be intimate but doesn't actually want a relationship or no one ever matches with me or someone scammed me online. I found out they weren't who they said they were. I've heard all your all stories, okay? I know what's going on out there. But there comes this point, and I call it like the point of surrender. It's when you've been through it all, like you've been screwed over, you've been single for so long, you've gotten so frustrated that you basically essentially just give up. And for some people, it's like a positive thing where they're like, you know what, I'm just gonna trust myself, I'm gonna trust the universe when the time is right. But for a lot of people, it, it appears as like a, I'm just totally over this, I'm so done, I'm so mad, it's hopeless for me, I can't stand it. And I get so many like uh, messages of personal readings from people who are in that situation. And whenever I read them, I'm like, yes, this is perfect. This person is like at the perfect place to manifest love. And it wouldn't seem like it. It wouldn't seem like you were like so ready to manifest love if you're just like, I can't stand it, I'm over it. It's hopeless for me. But like once you've reached that breakdown, you can have the breakthrough. And usually once you reach that breakdown of just letting it go and just being like over it. And like that's when you start to love yourself and reparent yourself. Like if you in your mind really think like I'm gonna be spending the rest of my life alone and that's sad and depressing, but whatever, I'm gonna make the most of it. Like then you end up like living your true life. You like end up just funny enough becoming really authentic <laughs> and you start just like chilling out and like that's usually when love comes like when you give up on love that's when it comes so it's like you're either giving up on it or you're like really in the zen point of view some of you guys are like super woke and you're just like zen about it and I admire you guys I manifested my husband at a time in my life when I was like f love I had had my heart broken really bad and I was so done. I had completely given up on, on it for the first time in my life. And it was the last thing on my mind. And then bam, that's when I manifested. <laughs> and it's so true. You, you know, if you followed Manifest with me in March or you've learned about the law of attraction or you've learned about manifestation, the last stage is surrender or just letting it go. And like basically not lot allowing it to occupy your thought space, not trying to worry and predict and control the situation. And that either happens through like a conscious choice of I'm not gonna do that anymore and I'm gonna focus on this, or it just happens because you're so upset and pissed off that you're just like done. And so either you're done or you've been done or you are like, have come to that conscious choice place. Either way, it doesn't matter. You've been reparenting yourself, which means you're learning to like be your own person and be individual and take care of yourself and love yourself, all that good stuff, whatever it means for you. And so this is a message telling you like, you're on the right path. Even if it might not seem like it, you are attracting love. And then here we see your person. This is the gardener, okay? This could be male, this could be female, this could be non-binary, this isn't about gender, okay? But this is a person who's out there who's looking for you. Like, how crazy is that? Think about it. There is someone out there who is dating or is thinking about you. Obviously they don't know who you are yet, but like they have it in their head that they wanna be with this type of person, they wanna have this type of relationship. Like they are thinking about you. And it's nice to know you're not in this alone. It's nice to know that when you meet this person, both of you guys will have this like sigh of relief of like, wow, 
how amazing is this? Finally, I met my person. We're both looking for the same thing. We have all this stuff in common. And like we both have the same intentions for a relationship. It's so beautiful. And that's a soulmate connection and maybe a twin flame connection. And so that's what I actually see coming your way. And so this gardener card is like a message that there's someone out there and yeah, they've got options. There's someone over here, there's someone over here, but they're like, you know what? This is the flower that I want. This is the one that I've been looking for. This is one, the one I want. Consider the fact that the person you end up meeting might have been through the same experiences in love. Like when I met my husband, he told me about like the people he dated in the past and some of the good people he dated, some of the soulmates he had, but before he met me, there was just like this string of people that just didn't fit his vibe. And so I want you to consider one of my favorite quotes, which is what you seek is seeking you. What if right now there really was someone out there who is seeking you specifically? Because that's what true love is. True love is understanding. Someone who chooses you specifically and you choose them specifically. Love is definitely a choice. You can fall in love and the chemistry and all that stuff you can't fake. That's like just, it's beautiful, it's magical, it's blissful. <laughs> but. It's a choice when you realize like someone consciously wants to like meet someone like you, just how you consciously want to attract love in your life. So this is saying like, consider the fact that you are luminous, that maybe you know you can't attract every single person you had a crush on, that yeah, maybe some people have left your life and, and you've been broken up with and it's caused you to question your sense of attractiveness inside and outside and it's taken a blow to your self-esteem. Any type of abandonment or rejection in love or relationship is gonna naturally take a blow to your self-esteem. But you are luminous and there will be people out there who will see you and be like, that is the flower I wanna pick. That is the one I want. And you will see little flowers out there that you're like, that's the one I wanna pick. And sometimes the flower is into you, sometimes they're not. Sometimes it just wilts and it ends up not being what you thought it was. That's okay. Love is worth the risk and you are luminous. You are so luminous. And here's the hummingbird. You attract love through joy, through joy in life. So this isn't about being fake happy. This is just about seeking joy every day. And um, I wouldn't worry about it because very soon you're gonna be having some connection because this is the swan, a symbol of beauty and grace, truly accepting yourself, but also a symbol of leaving difficult times behind. You might remember my swan card from my Wildwood deck where it's a symbol of leaving difficult times behind. Then we've got this naked person here in this waterfall. It's like a sense of freedom and vulnerability and bliss. The parrots here symbolize like vocalization and talking and being able to speak your truth. I think that's one of the coolest things about falling in love with someone is that you can tell this person like everything and you can be vulnerable with them and you can speak your truth and eventually, you know, have boundaries, take it slow in the beginning, but tell them your life story, tell them what you've been through, share common experiences, learn and grow and support and thrive with this person. And so we've got a little rainbow harmony message here for you about love. I think the main message today is really just telling you like what you seek is seeking you and you're not going to be alone forever. And if you've reached that breakdown point in love, it's actually a good thing because the breakdown leads to a breakthrough. So now let's read your message from this other deck. Okay. So this is your final card from a deck that I'm still in the process of learning, but I've been loving to read these messages lately in personal readings. This is the yin yang lover card and look how beautiful it is. These swirls of fuchsia and there's like some green in there and it looks like a, a, a person who's just bending backwards and just allowing the euphoria of love to just sweep through them. I love this card. So we're gonna read this to you. Yin Yang Lover. The force of attraction is stronger than your conscious control. Something you can't control. Attraction, that force, stronger than your conscious control. 
There is no need to fight this inner genius. You can learn to speak its language instead. What is it that captures you? What is it that pulls you close? Mmm, a little bit of messages from the beginning of our reading. That holds so much light for you. Why fight it? Don't step away from what you really love to grab hold of a second prize. And here we are, full circle, back to that first card we got the three of pentacles, which was talking about your goals and like your dreams and like wanting, needing and wanting to have more fun in life. So why not claim your first prize? It is there waiting for you. It is yours alone, beloved. No one else can claim your own divine birthright for you. By yielding and letting your desire fill your body, your heart, and your mind, you won't have to fight for what is already yours. So you're not gonna have to fight for what is already yours. Remember, what you seek is seeking you. It will come through the field of attraction that emanates from your own heart. It is not a question of worthiness or deservedness. Yes, you're already worthy. It is not a question of trying to work out what you need or want. Your heart always knows. Listen, if you still can't hear, then just feel. You'll get the gist of it soon enough. This card has a message for you. No matter whether you seem to be heading closer to your goal or further away, you are making real spiritual progress and what you want is the same thing that is wanting you. <gasps> It says here in the book, what you, what you are seeking is seeking you. <laughs> I can't believe we pulled the card. That was like the message. Oh, I love this, you guys. What you are seeking is seeking you. It's only a matter of time before you get it. So that is your message. I hope that it resonates with you. Thank you so much for coming to my channel, and I will see you next time. Peace out. So for those of you guys who choose number two, we've got a card here that is going to describe like where you're at right now in love. We've got some cards for what's coming in. And then we're going to end with reading from one of the books that goes with my new deck about just like an overall message for you for where you're at in love right now. So I'm smiling because <laughs> I feel like those of you guys who choose number two are like a spicy bunch of people. This is the chariot card, okay? So you're the chariot and you are so ready for love. Like you are galloping in the direction of what you want. Some of you guys watching here are not the type that are usually single for long. And those of you guys who have been single for a long time, you're just like, I'm ready, let's do this. I'm gonna do something different. So no doubt you've probably already been online dating or you've had some dates or maybe there's some people you've been flirting with or like you're starting to get a little bit more attention. You've changed things up on your path and you're just like ready. You're galloping on the wings of destiny. And this could also be an omen, like love is right around the corner. I've been getting a lot of predictions about like August, September, October for a lot of people falling in love then. I'm probably gonna put my love readings on sale then and it's gonna be all about love on my channel then, just as a heads up. I know what's coming, I can feel it. There, that Lionsgate portal every year is always like love, 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 twin flame union, soulmates meeting. It's like an interesting time of year. And so we've got a lot of that going on. Um, but what's coming in? What's coming in? Because things are moving really fast for you. Well, first of all, we're seeing like, once again, you're an attractive person. You have no problem really attracting love. Uh, you're feeling good about yourself. You're feeling good. You know, we've all got flaws. We've all got insecurities. We've all got little things inside of us or outside of us that we want to hide that we're a little nervous about. But I feel like you've been doing some sprucing up. Maybe you changed your look recently. Maybe you've been doing some spiritual practices or meditation or you just, you're in a good vibe right now. And you're like, I got it going on. <laughs> you're, you're, you're loving yourself more now than you have in a long time. And that is a powerful energy because when you change the way that you see yourself, the world reacts to you differently. And I'm gonna say that again for the people in the back. 
when you change the way that you see and you feel about yourself, the world reacts to you differently. And that is exactly what is going on with this Rainbow Reviver card right here. Like you literally have had an internal change and maybe it's manifested on the outside, taking better care of yourself, sprucing yourself up a, a little bit, peacocking, being like, you know what? I have it going on. Um, one thing you've really been enjoying lately about being single is the emotional freedom. So I'm talking to those of you guys who have been doing the friends with benefits thing, who have been hooking up, who have been kind of non-committal, maybe just exploring your sexuality or whatever, and that's cool. I'm a total feminist. Get it, get it, get it, get it. But I'm feeling a shift. Like maybe you've been avoiding true intimacy, true emotional intimacy, because the last time that you opened your heart to somebody, you really got burned. And I know that sucks when you break up with someone and you're like, holy crap, this person has all of my secrets. They know everything about me. They know my insecurities, everything. Like that's hard to like, just let someone like that walk away or to have them walk away from you. So it's easier sometimes to just be kind of emotionally free and to think that, you know what, I'm never gonna find someone who's gonna have the full package or who I will have amazing like physical connection with, but also emotional connection with. You know, I think there's a lot of people out there who like the bad boys, the rebels, or the bad girls, the rebels, or the bad people, the rebels. And when they actually meet someone who's nice, they're bored of them. And I know what that's like because I'm like that. <laughs> But you really can have it all. You can find someone who's bad, who's rebellious, who's adventurous, who's like interesting physically, but is also emotionally like woke and on your vibe and wants to connect with you and like go deeper and like know you. And that's what true emotional intimacy is. So there's a shift happening in you right now where you're like, you know what? I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to open my heart again. And opening your body or opening your flirtatious energy or opening your mind to someone is different than opening your heart and your soul. That's like the ultimate vulnerability. So you're ready for that. You're getting bored. You're getting bored of either just being completely single and like flirting with people on the internet and nothing following through, or swiping on Tinder or you're getting bored of just these connections or these friends with benefits or these one night stands or these people that you just don't feel like you can really be everything with. And so you can have it all. And this is forgiveness. This is the forgiveness card that's coming out for you, okay? Just take a look at it for a second. The forgiveness card. To me, this forgiveness card is really about don't blame yourself. Don't judge yourself for any choices you've made, for this time of freedom that you've had. Uh, don't blame yourself, don't judge yourself for what happened in that last relationship that broke your heart. You've learned from it, you've grown from it. You don't have to forgive the person that screwed you over, but it's almost like deciding you're not gonna carry that weight or that burden with you that you trust in yourself now, that you trust in the energies around you now to bring you what you really deserve. And so the last card here is the serendipity card. So just look at the picture on this card. It's this girl like right around the corner. She doesn't even realize it is like everything that she's been dreaming of, or it's this person and right around the corner is everything they've been dreaming of. You're so close. I think that stag over there, it's definitely a symbol of like sexuality, but it's like a white stag and it's like, it's powerful. I mean, imagine seeing one of those in the forest and being like, oh my gosh, God is real. <laughs> the universe, or just like how majestic it, it must be. Like that's the majesty of what is right around the corner for you very soon here and you're not even aware of it. You're just going along. And so the best advice I have for you as you move forward is to, in little ways where you feel safe, whether in a friendship or with a family member or maybe someone you're dating, slowly start opening up a little bit more. Have healthy boundaries and whatnot. 
but ditch that whole idea that you have to close yourself off emotionally so you don't get your heart hurt. So what if you get your heart hurt? What's worse is regret. What's worse is not knowing. What's worse is not taking that leap of faith. And I think that you're ready. So now I'm gonna to read to you your last message from this new book called Journey of Love. And here is your card. It says, just for a moment, joy. And she's like opening her heart like we were talking about. So let's see what we got going on for you here. Just for a moment, joy. This card brings you a message. In this moment, trust that there is joy waiting to be felt and found, no matter how hard that may be to believe right now. Let go of your attachment to the apparent problems at hand as much as you can, and you will be allowing yourself to let the divine take over and sort out what needs to happen here. There is help awaiting your invitation always. Why not let it in and while you're at it, let some joy in too. You are being offered divine support to live a less guarded existence, to disassemble yourself a little or a lot and let your true nature, which is joy, bubble to the surface without rhyme or reason other than just because it lives. Oh, I love that. I hope that this reading resonated with you. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and I will see you next time. Peace out. So for those of you guys who choose number three, let's go ahead and get your message. And I'm smiling really big cause I peeked at your cards and they are legit. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for you. You're manifesting love, okay? Whoop, I'm dropping cards here. I'm dropping cards, Woo. That's what happens when I get really excited, but I got your card. Your first card here is the sun. Okay, so if you know anything about tarot, in fact, when I learned tarot, this is one of the first cards I learned because it's just very basic. The sun is the most happy, uplifting, rewarding, fun, exciting card in the tarot. If you ask a yes or no question to the tarot, the card, the only card that means like a definitive yes is the sun. And so it's like all is bright, all is happy, all is cheery. The sun can have to do with the relationship actually coming together um, or happy family circumstance, finances picking up. It's like good stuff. So this is your first card about what's going on in love. So I'm interested to see the rest. Okay, so <laughs> the next card is the manifestation card and it's telling you like, yeah, you either have just or are just about to manifest exactly what you want in love. It's something I think is really interesting is that when someone's manifesting love, whether it's through like rituals, the law of attraction, or just putting that energy out, like I'm ready for love, or maybe like you're single and you're just like loving yourself and having a good time, bam, love's gonna come in. And when it rains, it pours. So I don't think you're gonna be attracting just one person. I actually think you're gonna have a lot of options. You either already do, or you're about to start going on a lot of dates or start meeting like a couple different people. Maybe you meet somebody at work and then you bump into someone on the street and then you match with somebody on Tinder or your friend introduces you to someone or someone you've kind of been crushing on for a while finally steps forward. It's that type of energy. So the whole thing for you is gonna be about like you deciding who is the most compatible. And so this is actually like pretty awesome. Like you get to figure out like who you wanna be with. So there will be a time where you're gonna be dating quite a few people and that might be a little bit hard to juggle, but just have fun with it. Have fun being adored, have fun getting the attention, have fun with the free dinners, have fun having some first kisses and testing out that vibe between you and other people. Like, you deserve to be adored. You deserve to have people drooling over you. Do You deserve to have people fighting over you. So it'll be like that for a while. But a word of caution, just because I talked to a lot of people in this situation, don't take it too far. I've talked to some people who end up having two or three boyfriends or two or three girlfriends and they can't choose and they've gotten in way too deep with all these people. So 
trust your heart to know when it's time to cut it off with somebody and when it's time to take a chance on someone else or vice versa. But I feel like there's a good vibe telling you like uh, you will know who to choose because here's the distorted masculine card. Just take a look at it for a second. This distorted masculine card is all about you recognizing some people just got some bad vibes up on them or just have the wrong priorities or have toxic energy or are unstable. And it's not like you're looking for perfection. I wasn't perfect when I met my twin flame. He wasn't perfect when he met me, but it's, looking for a good match and knowing the warning signs. Trust your intuition. Don't be so thirsty that you're missing out on like the real deal with some of these people. But I have a feeling you're gonna be just fine. There, It's gonna be hard though, because there could be one or two people you're really attracted to, but they turn out to kind of be scum. That's the worst. But it's not gonna be hard at all for you to recognize who the one is because you will fall so deeply in love. And that's what I see. I see love soon, maybe within the next three months, like falling in love. And I see a relationship and I see a commitment. It's coming soon. So for those of you guys who choose number three, I don't think you chose this one by accident. I think you just need to know that you've got to, like it's all gonna be all about love in your life coming up really soon here. You're gonna have a lot of options, a lot of opportunities. The worst problem you'll have is just who to choose, but then again, the answer will be obvious to you. So I hope that this message resonates with you. Real quick before we end here, I would like to read you your final card from my new deck, okay? So I'm actually gonna be reading a little bit from the book to sum up this message, all right? So the card that you got is she is the moon. So look at this. She is the moon. You know how alluring the moon is? And it could be he is the moon or they are the moon, depending. This is not just a message for females here. But we're going to go ahead and pull this 21 and read to you what's up. So... <laughs> Oh, this is making me laugh. Okay, so this card brings you a message. Your manifestation is unfolding in perfect timing. If you feel something isn't happening fast enough or is happening quickly and you're unsure if you're really ready, be assured all is well. If something is not clear to you and you would like it to be more so, the clarity that you seek will come to you. Do not worry. Do not try to force the insight especially during Mercury retrograde. <laughs> Just be with what is happening now and trust. You are moving and growing and all is well. Soon you will see that for yourself, just as the moon grows full and revealing, even in the midst of deepest night. And there's like a little poem here at the end I wanna read to you and the poem is called Waiting. These moments are precious like jewels on the crown of life. They beckon my heart, forming memories that sparkle with joy. And like the longing of a sweet caress, they draw me near, melting into one, showing what is possible on the journey of life, waiting for the season's change. Ooh, spicy. I hope that you enjoy this reading. Thank you so much for your support and I will see you next time. Peace out.